talk about the Kolpitz oscillator. Invented in 1918 by Edwin H. Kolpitz, it's a tuned circuit consisting of a single inductor in parallel with two capacitors in series. Now I happen to be using these Schmidt triggers. Uh, you could use a comparator or an op amp. This symbol here is uh, the symbol for an inverting uh, uh, Schmidt trigger, and it represents the, uh, the voltage curve of the Schmidt trigger. Now, these Schmidt triggers have hysteresis, and uh, here's the voltage curve for a uh, inverting, non-inverting uh, Schmidt trigger. So, the, uh, the output transitions from uh, low to high and from high to low uh, at different thresholds, and that's your hysteresis range. But we're just going to use it for an oscillator. Now, to find the, uh, the frequency of the oscillator, we just take 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the inductance times the capacitance, the total capacitance. Now, since these capacitors are in series, we need to use this, uh, this formula for series capacitance. Uh, if these happen to be 10 picofarads each, then 10 times 10 is 100 divided by our 20, so it would be a total of 5 picofarads. Now, we can put uh, some numbers to this uh, into this formula here and calculate that on the uh, on your calculator to uh, to find what your hertz is. I want to have seven megahertz, and I know at seven megahertz now these two capacitors are going to be a voltage divider. So I need I know I want to be in a picofarad range because in a microfarads at seven megahertz it's uh, it's only going to be 0 0.0023 ohms. So you know I need it in uh, to have a voltage divider, I need the impedance, uh, you know, up here, this uh, 10 picofarads is going to be, uh, you know, 2K and 5 is going to be about 4K ohms. So, uh, now I happen to have a uh, 39 uh, microhenry uh, inductor, so I just uh, chose that and I plugged in some uh, uh, picofarads to, until it came up to uh, 7 megahertz. Now, um, you can do this on your calculator, but the easiest thing to do is just take a uh, to Google up a resonance frequency calculator, and then you can play with it just by putting in different different numbers to to come up to the uh, the megahertz that you you want. So we're going for seven megahertz. Now we're going to uh, take a look at the scope and see if I actually uh, came up with seven megahertz. Here's my uh, board here that I put it on. We'll go over and take a look at the uh, scope. Now here we are at the scope, and uh, another very good sine wave. Well, going through that Schmidt trigger, it should be a uh, square wave, so it's it's a lousy sine wave or a lousy uh, square wave. But uh, you can see that I have uh, well, 7.08 uh, megahertz, and it's fluctuating fluctuating around a little bit. I uh, do this uh, the way this breadboard is, but uh, yeah, the uh, Schmidt trigger uh, will change an analog signal into a digital signal. It should come out to be a square wave. So um, anyway, it's at uh, seven megahertz. We'll go back to the uh, breadboard and take a look at it. Now we're back at the workbench here. Now you see in my diagram here that I have uh, ten picofarad trimmer capacitors in here. Now those are going to if they were cranked up all the way they'd only add up to uh, 5 picofarads and of course to get our 7 megahertz I need uh, uh, 13 picofarads at 39 microhenries. So uh, you know why is this thing even working? Now we're using this breadboard and these breadboards you know they shouldn't be used uh, you know above a 1 megahertz and what happens here is that uh, these uh, there's metal strips in here and they're separated by a, an insulator and they form capacitors. Now, between each of these uh, metal strips here, it's about uh, you know two two point five uh, picofarads. So, I have you know an extra two point five picofarads here, an extra two point five here, and across the two of them, maybe uh, you know uh, you know one point two five picofarad across here. From three to four, I probably have another uh, two and a half picofarads here. So. The total amount of capacitance, uh, you know, well, since I do have 7 megahertz, and if this is at uh, actually 39 uh, microhenries, I have to have about uh, 13, uh, you know, uh, picofarads of capacitance in here. 
Uh, this thing here shouldn't really be hanging up in air like that, so we don't know if this is actually uh, 39 uh, microhenries or not. But uh, uh, between this and the capacitors, um, it came out to uh, 7 megahertz. So uh, not a good idea to use a breadboard at higher frequencies, but uh, just be aware that there's a lot of stray capacitance on the board there that you uh, you have to deal with. Anyway, uh, uh, thank you.